Okay, so now we're going to go to Judges 4. Now, Judge, you know, and I know most of us are pretty familiar with uh, this portion of Scripture and uh, with the, prof the prophetess, Deborah. I'm, I'm going to refer to a couple of different people in the Bible, but uh, the Lord really spoke to me about uh, speaking out of Judges 4 with Deborah, and she was a prophetess, she was a judge, and she was a wife. All right? So Judges 4, 4 through 10, and I'll try to skim through this whole thing. It says, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time, and she used to sit to hear and decide disputes under the palm tree of Deborah. And she sent a word, and the people, uh, let me back up. The people were crying out, and they were saying, look, we've been under oppression for 20 years, and we can't take it anymore. Sort of like what we're going through now, you know. Maybe it's not 20 years, but it seems like it. Sheesh. Since March, I mean, we're like, you know, this being sequestered is like over the top right now. Right. And so, um, but they were crying out. And when have you ever seen people from around the world praying the way people are praying? Yeah, I'm telling you, this thing has really gotten us on our knees. If yeah. you never prayed before, you're praying now yeah, sure. because we want out. Right. <laughs> so anyway, God have mercy on my soul today. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a detour. Anyway. So she sent word and summoned Barak, the son of Abinamoam. I don't know how to say these words, so have mercy on me. From Kadesh Naphtali and said to him, Behold, the Lord, the God of Israel, has commanded, Go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men of war from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulon. I will draw out Sisera, now, and I'll explain all this, the commander of Jamin's army, with you, with his chariots and his infantry to meet you at the river Kishon, and I will hand him over to you. And Barak said, uh-uh, if you will not go with me, then I'm not going. She said, but if, and he said, but if you will not go with me, I won't go. And she said, all right, that's okay. She said, but nevertheless, the journey, she was prophesying. She wasn't putting him down. She was prophesying. She said, I certainly will go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you take will not be for your honor and glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went to Barak and to Kadesh, and Barak summoned the army. Now, let me just say this. First of all, um, this, this King Jabin was a wicked man. He was evil. And they had, they had all this military support and this military equipment. And the interesting thing about Jabin is his name meant intelligence. So Basically, if you want to look at it metaphorically, what we're looking at is there is a war between the minds. Isn't that the way the enemy attacks us, right? It's all in the head. It's all the lies that we've listened to. It's the root system of our hurts that we have not addressed is how we get our behinds kicked. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. It's time to break out of that old mindset that has kept you in defeat because God says that we are more than conquerors and we are victorious, all right? So what happened is he has 900 chariots of armor. Think of armored vehicles, those armored things that they use in the war, um, those things, yeah. And so think about 900 of them against people that are just footmen. Right. What do they have, bow and arrows? I mean, come on. So in the natural, it looked totally impossible. You know, and I know we can relate with a lot of our situations. And so I feel here, I don't, listen, Barak was not a wimp because he had 10,000. She said, you go and get your men, get the tribe to, to fight. Um, you know, this army. If he were a wimp, he would not have been able to accomplish that. I look at this as the apostolic and the prophetic, the man and the woman, knowing who they are working together. She prophesied and said, a woman will take out Sisera. And so what happened was when they went to war, the Israeli army defeated all of Jabin's army. It was a miracle yeah. that that took place, but one got away. And who guess who that was? Sisera. And so Sisera then, you know, went to Jael's tent, and because uh, her husband knew him, and they thought they were allies, but she had it. She was going to take him out, and she said, "No, devil, you are not coming into my home to wreak havoc." And so she was wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. He came in, he went to sleep, and she put the tent peg. Guess where? Through his head. Right. Are we dealing with a mindset that God is asking us to deal with at this time? She said, devil, you are not coming in here yeah. with your slick self, coming to 
um, manipulate and twist words and wreak havoc in my home. See, the women are the watchmen. So are men, but women are watching. Who's up in the middle of the night most of the time praying? Women. Who's at the church at prayer meetings? Women. But men need to rise up and come because we need both to, together to, to, for this force to be, uh, you know, to raise up a force like it never before in a kingdom of God. So she put the ten peg through his head and destroyed the enemy. And so the enemy was defeated. And so she was a wise and God-fearing woman. She held open court. She urged the people to turn back to God. And the other thing, I just wanted to back up. I forgot to mention Lapidoth. I think that's how you say her husband's name. His name meant torch. And he was a fiery torch, the, the spirit of the living God. And, and Deborah, see, they work together. Then I was reading another commentary, and it said that they, some suggest that Barak was uh, Lapido. They're, you know how they all had different names? And that they could have been a husband and wife. Who knows? That was just a suggestion. But I love, his name means lightning. So again, lightning to me represents our intercession, the torch, the torch of God, the fire of God, the sevenfold spirit of the Holy Spirit, you know, working together. See, it's not one will put a thousand, a thousand in flight, two will put 10,000. It's the spirit of God. It's we need each other to accomplish what he, he has for us in this season, in any season, really. And so um, they, they were working together. And so he, um, you know, supported his wife. And so um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, just going back to Jael, when she took that tent peg, she was decreeing over him that, you, you know, this thing that you've lied to me, even about uh, bloodline issues in my family, I'm taking out. I say no to that. See, we're in that time of, of declaring, right? right? This is the era of pay. Watch what you're saying. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. But I really believe that there is a a generational blessing that was released because she destroyed the curse that kept speaking into her of defeat. And so right now, I just want you to encourage yourself and say, wait a second, I have the power of the blood of Jesus. And in our natural mind, this sounds crazy, but in the spirit realm, it's powerful. Yeah. And that what the enemy has set out for evil in my life and my family's life is defeated yeah. through the power of the blood. We have seen too many miracles. That's we have right. seen all of our lives here have been restored. That's right. We were on a path like today. I was on a detour, a path that was trying to prevent me from getting to where I needed to go. But God got me back on, on track. And if you're on a path, right now that you may feel that you, you, I, I just don't know where the heck I'm going, how I'm going to get out of this mess. Well, I promise you, God has a purpose and a plan and a strategy for you, a destiny. God wants to heal your broken heart. I know there are people watching that have feel shamed. You feel defeated. I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you right now Amen. to bring healing. He says, I came to heal the brokenhearted. You may not seem a way, to, you know, to have a way out, but God has one. He has a plan. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He has a plan. He's not surprised by any of this. So cry out to him. Give him that chance. That's what somebody said to me when they were ministering to me. They said, what do you have to lose? Because I thought they were all crazy. I didn't want to hear what they had to say. He, they said, what do you have to lose? Depression. Depression, fear, suicidal thoughts, drugs, alcohol. What do you have to lose? Right. And I thought, well, but I'm not going to let them know because these people are crazy. <laughs> I don't like the way they worship. I don't like what they do. I said, it scared me. <laughs> but then I just thought, well, it's either that or I die, you know, one or the other. And cried out to God. And it's Mother's Day. What a great time. <laughs> to, to just cry out. There's a mother side of God. There's a, it's, it, you know, some people say, oh, don't say that. But it's the many breasty one. He's the, the nourisher. Yeah. He's the compassionate side yeah. of God. He's El Shaddai, Almighty God. And one of the definitions, the God of utter destruction. Don't mess with my kids. Right. That's how much he loves us. He turns our lives around. So I just yes. implore you, give him a chance. 